Metro cold case detectives are asking for your help tonight in solving a double homicide that has baffled police for 16 years. It's a crime with a Las Vegas flavor, too. A well-known Elvis tribute artist and his beauty queen girlfriend were shot and killed in what looked like a mob-style hit. Detectives have pursued several theories, but then have crossed them off a one by one. George Knapp, the I team, is here with new information about a heartbreaking case. Well, we sure have no shortage of Elvi here in no. Las Vegas, but Dana McKay always stood out. He thought of himself as a tribute artist, not an impersonator. And by all accounts, he was as close to the real deal as they come. McKay and his girlfriend did not deserve what happened to them in October 1993, nor did they deserve to have their murderers go unpunished. Tonight, the latest on a case that's been profiled before, but now there's a new twist. Dana McKay was one of the best in the business, a king among Elvi. So like the original, he was the first to play Elvis in the Legends in Concert show and convincing enough to portray the king in a factual documentary. He was phenomenal. He looked like him naturally. Uh, he sounded like him naturally and he loved the music. These days, Dana McKay's best friend, Danny Coker, owns a custom car and motorcycle shop, but longtime locals might remember him as horror movie host Kelt Cool Ryder, who sometimes invited his pal to join him on air. His memories of McKay haunt the count. Drives me crazy. It's, 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 it's not fair. It is not, their, their justice has not been served. Coker remembers the day in October 1993 when he learned about the murders of Dana McKay and his longtime girlfriend, Mary Huffman, a beauty pageant winner. The slayings occurred just inside their sprawling Las Vegas home, which McKay called Mini Graceland. He put up a fight before he died. Detectives theorized the couple must have interrupted a burglary, though the only thing taken was a stack of paperwork. It's kind of a mystery to me why a burglar would break into a house, murder two people, and take a file. When burglary was ruled out, detectives then guessed it must have been a drug deal gone bad, that McKay was killed on orders from drug traffickers, even though no drugs were ever found in the house, in the victims, or anywhere else. And I remember being woken up in the middle of the night by the sound of my grandmother sobbing, and it was this cry that I can't even explain to you. It was so terrible. Anybody who's ever heard a mother mourn for her child knows what I'm talking about. Misty and, Vargas um, was a youngster when her father was murdered, but is consumed by the case. She and Coker both suspect the slayings had something to do with McKay's main business, a landscaping operation. At the time of his death, McKay was involved in a brutal legal dispute over the company. And he told my uncle that his life had been threatened involving this business and that the exact words of the, um, the suspect, I guess you would say, were, I will see you dead before we get to court. And sure enough. McKay's partner in the landscaping business was Tim Stone Street, today a prominent builder of exclusive homes. Police have never named him as a suspect. Stone Street was in Aruba when the murders occurred. Stone Street's current attorney, John Spilatro, told us, quote, he was cleared, and if you guys are saying anything otherwise, you can deal with the legal ramifications. Cops and others should be looking at the people McKay was dealing drugs with. I've seen none. I've seen no, no indication of, of drug involvement. I've seen no indication that this murder was a result of, of drugs at all. Cold case honcho okay, Lieutenant Lou Roberts, Roberts says attorney Spilatro's drug theory was discounted long ago. Like Coker and Vargas, Roberts thinks the case can be solved. He confirmed to us that detectives have pursued a promising lead. They've interviewed a former drug dealer now serving a life term for financing a 1996 murder for hire scheme. It's not clear what he told police about McKay's death or how much he can be trusted. Everybody has an angle. Uh, everybody has um, something that they want. That's certainly true for Vargas and Coker. I, I just like the opportunity to say to uh, the person out there who's responsible for this, and I do not mean the gunman, I mean the person who made this all happen. I want that person to know that I'm not going to rest. I want justice for my family. I have no, no doubt in my mind, beyond the shadow of a doubt, I am, I am positive who had this done. 
Misty Vargas wants to remind the public there is a $25,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the people who did this. Cold case detectives say what they need most is information on a possible motive for the slayings. Again, they say they do not have a list of suspects right now, but have reason to believe a break in this case might be near. If you have information, you can call Metro or you can call the I-Team. Any idea of what was in the missing file? Well, uh, Danny Coker said he read that file two days before the murder, and uh, McKay showed it to him. It was reportedly contained financial data, sort of a paper trail to show who had stolen and then sold off a bunch of heavy equipment mm. that belonged to the landscaping company. Obviously, if they had that information, they could uh, maybe have a motive there, but yeah. the file's gone. Gosh. Thank you, George.